Today's topic, the Underground Railroad. Although many of us perceive Harriet Tubman as the universal godsend from heaven, the ex-slave who despite her shortcomings of, well, being a slave, and traveling back to the south, risking her own life to bring several people to the north to their freedom. This, of course, led us to neglect one man who had such an impact on the notion of slavery, it's in standing. His name is Levi Coffin. To put in comparison, Tubman was considered the conductor of the railroad. Coffin was named the president of the Underground Railroad. So first, some backstory on why a white man from a well-to-do family in North Carolina would concern himself with slaves. Coffin was born into a Quaker family whose ideas focused primarily on everything is holy and slavery is bad, with an underlying tone that all men were entitled to freedom. Debatable on women. Young Coffin was also exposed to several slaves in his hometown. In Nantucket, Carolina, he would encounter several, encounter several slaves who would talk about their, their pain of being separated from their family. Levi would then be quoted saying, <clears throat> How terrible we should feel if father were taken from us. The desire to help slaves would continue over the years to the point where he would open a school to help teach slaves to read in North Carolina. Places weighted than bread. Skipping ahead to 1826, we then go to Levi's a young man happily married, moving with his wife Catherine to Newport, Indiana. Why is this important? Well, this house would later see aid over 300 slaves between the years of 1826 to 1827. It worked perfectly as the Coffin House was strategically located about 20 miles north of Indiana in the line of two more stations that were almost within walking distance. It allowed for the execution of these well thought out plans such as dressing several children and their parents up in white face and being able to escort them throughout to the next station in a very well thought out manner. Skipping ahead a few years, Coffin has successfully saved about 300 slaves. This, of course, was a time when Levi began hating financial troubles and actually considered giving up slavery. It was more for two reasons. One, all his money went towards adding new rooms or fancy new inventions like these ones to help with slaves. Or two, many pro-slavers began boycotting his store because why not? If you want someone to leave your town, you don't buy their goods. Needless to say, Coffin's altruism did eventually spread to the rest of his community, with several of the women creating a sewing club through the sole purpose of making new disguises for slaves, and the men aiding in by financing new projects or even helping create new ways to hide slaves. We of course reached the conclusion on why we should regard Levi Coffin with such high regard. You see, before he left Indiana, he did help one girl. A game by the girl of Eliza and her baby. It was pretty standard show. She was being chased, she crashed his place, and then she left. But we don't know. This, later, this girl would later meet Harriet Beecher Stowe, a writer, and would tell such a heartbreaking story, Miss Beecher would be inclined to write a book about it. This titled Uncle Tom's Cabin. This one, which has notoriety to starting the Civil War due to its controversial topics of how slaves were treated at the time. That's right, this man, the man hardly nobody in this room knows, inadvertently saved over 1,000 slaves and all the while started a civil war that would be the reason why we have the 13th Amendment entitling all men the right to freedom, ultimately ending slavery once and for all. Created using Powtoon.